Uh, New York Times Magazine now with a new article, what really brought down the Boeing 737 MAX. Malfunctions caused two deadly crashes, but an industry that puts unprepared pilots in the cockpit is just as guilty. Joining us this, uh, this afternoon is the reporter behind the story, William Longevisha. William, good to have you with us. Thanks for the time. Well, thank you. There's been a big back and forth between regulators, the carriers, uh, the manufacturer about who's to blame. What did you find? Well, I, my impression from the very beginning was that the, neither of these accidents should have happened, of course. And why did they happen is the question. There's no doubt that Boeing uh, engineered or in, and implemented a system that was not up to standard. Um, so there was a problem there. Boeing sort of fell, fell down there. But whatever errors Boeing made, it became obvious through months of research here, whatever errors they made uh, should not have caused the accident. And the accident was truly caused by, uh, by the crews in both cases. These, both of these accidents were caused by the crews. Well, Alpa's going to uh, respond by saying we were improperly trained. Is that not fair? Not fair. Uh, the, 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 where the rubber met the road in, these, in this case, or the failure of that system, the so-called MCAS, it amounted to just a runaway trim. Runaway trim is a really standard problem in any airplane with electric trim. It's, it's been around since you know, the beginning of time as an issue. Uh, and the solution is always available. In the 737, it's very simple. There are two toggle switches on the center pedestal to turn the trim off. So for whatever reason the trim runs away, whether it's the faulty MCAS or whether it's some other reason, the trim cutoff switches are there um, and can easily overcome the problem. And so your allegation is that the pilot should have known that. They should have engaged those switches. It's more than an allegation, it's a certainty. And we know, in fact, that in the second case, um, not only did the pilots, I mean, every pilot knows about the, the, the cutout switches. Um, you, you, they're big, fat toggle switches. So you can't fly a 737 and not know about them. Um, the question is, will you use them at the right time? In the case of the second accident, where the, all of the information of the first accident was you know, widely disseminated, uh, we know that the crew of the Ethiopian 737, they knew about what happened in the Indonesia. They knew about the MCAS, and they still messed it up. What do you think Boeing does here uh, from this point on? And have you been impressed by sort of the pushback from international regulators this week? Look, this, the story turned very political right away. Um, I, 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 I find it hard to use the word impressed when I talk when you talk about regulators. It's a, there's a lot of political posing going on. I think Boeing is, you know, has a big problem on its hands. And the problem is not really a technical one. The problem is a political one. And who's going to take, have the courage to say this airplane now should, should be flying again? I think it should always have been flying. It became clear doing the, the work here that really there was probably never a reason to ground it. But there are fundamental problems much larger than the 737 that have been exposed by these two accidents. And that has to do with the nature of the 300 to 400,000 airline pilots in the world, the nature of the industry globally, uh, especially in part rapidly expanding uh, sectors of Asia, It'll discount airlines. What is the quality of piloting? What is the quality of training? What is the level of airmanship? What is the level of of understanding of the airplane in the, in the most fundamental sense. And it, we're, Boeing, like Airbus, like all of us, faces a real problem in that domain. And if Boeing made a mistake here, I, in my opinion, this is now just opinion, I believe the largest mistake was to overestimate the quality of the pilots it was selling its airplanes to. Finally, uh, you did a great book a while back on the Miracle on the Hudson, which is largely a book about Airbus. How would you characterize the horse race between the two companies? Do you think it's shifted for good? No, I can't make that kind of prediction. I'd, I would never underestimate Boeing. Boeing can, is, going to, is going to bounce back in one way or another and, and strongly. It's a very talented company. Airbus is an equally talented company. I can't predict that horse race. I, I suppose there's plenty of room in the market for both companies.